Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I never knew where this office was, so now I do. Um, right next to the funeral home right here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the enemy I have is what I heard. Well, thanks for having uh, Lisa and I today. This is Lisa Marquez Bresnahan, and she uh, served on the book task force with me. We call it the Amarillo uh, Barrio Historical District. And so um, we started meeting uh, literally in September of 2017 and um, met as a task force. There were, at that time, there were nine of us that met to start talking about how do we do this book. And Lisa, I'm going to let you hold that up in a minute so people can see what the book looks like. Um, but when we started as the task force, we knew there were a, a lot of people that we needed to talk to. It was uh, really a question of who was going to be interview, who interviewed, who wanted to be interviewed. Uh, were they still living, for one thing? Uh, if they weren't, did they have, could we reach relatives? And everybody <coughs> had a sign or release form that said, you know, I get permission to have this information, this photo in the book. Um, we also knew that we needed to record the history. So the Breakfast in the Body of Road came together in the summer of 2017 and said we need to record our history of the Barrio neighborhood um, because it hadn't been done and was really past due. So as we were meeting and coming up with who to interview, um, what historical sites we needed to know about, um, how long would this take, how long would the book be, um, and it ended up being 99 pages long, and then we broke it into six categories. We talked about the history of Barrio, Barrio and I'll talk about it in a minute. Then we did, so we did history, we did uh, important leaders from our past, and then important leaders currently. We also talked about uh, neighborhood churches and parks and schools um, from in, in the barrio and really involved businesses, not just any business, but those who were involved in our neighborhood. And then we also talked about uh, the future plans for the barrio. And so for those of you who don't know, in March 2017, uh, the City of Amarillo Planning Department worked with a committee of local residents and community members to design a neighborhood plan. And it took us 13 months to prepare that. And in that plan, we included that we would record the history of uh, this neighborhood. And so we did. And one of the ways we did that was, of course, through our book. So this plan actually looks like this. It's about 112 pages. Mm -hmm. yeah, so much in that around. But in it, it had, you know, when we met and what were our goals uh, for the meetings and stuff, and then went into a lot of the early maps, uh, several pictures, me, several pictures. Um, and so some of you may not know where the body is, so I'm going to define that because you're going to see it on this map on page um, 24. So it runs from Southeast 2nd to Southeast 29th. So if you picture uh, the Amarillo Stockyards all the way to uh, 29th, which is Longhorn Street. So it would be behind Glenwood Park, basically. And then it runs right at the um, railroad tracks at Garfield to Ross Osage. So, those, so they're seven blocks wide and 27 blocks long. And then it also is approximately 950 acres of land. So other things that were put in here, um, we took a lot of uh, their staff took from the city took a lot of pictures of all the new. There's a lot. We have 123 historical sites in the Barrio. I don't know if you knew that. There's a lot of them here. There's a lot of data in here about uh, who lives here, what what is the uh, the age groups, what's the poverty level, so on and so forth. The population. Uh, one of the things we knew right off the bat was that there are. All the yellows here are vacant properties, there's a lot of those. We also lack sidewalks. So we knew those were critical issues for us to really look at them. But I'll give you a chance to look through it yourself. Um, here's the lots without adjacent sidewalks, all the yellow. So you may wonder, well, why weren't sidewalks built? Well, when you look at the east side of, of Amarillo, a lot of the houses didn't have them. They weren't, they weren't built at that time. 
and as businesses came in, they got to choose if they were going to do one or not. And so some did, some didn't. And so now we have new, as new <coughs> business comes in, typically they're going to build a sidewalk. But where, where I live, there is no sidewalk. So when you go walking, it is um, just road. And that's pretty common for a lot of people to have there as well. We have five uh, corridors, and they are, um, I'm going to show you on this. So if you are running, this is Garfield heading to Ross. And so they are 10th Avenue. Arthur, Ross, Osage, and 27. Those are four, sorry, four of them. And then the third, so five. And this is 10th Avenue. So what you're looking at here is um, we want to do a lighting project because lighting is important to us and it's decorative lighting. But we also, because of the lack of sidewalks, we also want to put in sidewalks and trees. So what you look at here is our pilot project that we're working on and we're fundraising for is right on 10th and Arthur, right on that corner. As you come under the bridge, there's 10th and Arthur. Mm -hmm. We want to yeah, have that be our project because you immediately see it when you're going west or east to do that. So I'm going to send that around as well. And so what that would involve are trees, sidewalks, easements, decorative lighting to be able to have for that. And it's a pretty hefty price because it's $211,000, just a little bit over that. And so the city will pay a portion and we will pay a portion. So we're in the middle of um, actually fundraising for that. I'll send in a one this way so you can both see it for that. <coughs> so what you have on your bookmarks are our nine uh, our projects in motion. And what those are are projects that we are constantly working on you'll see mural underpass. So on 10th Avenue, going from really um, on that underpass on 10th, the, the railroad company has given us permission to paint it. And so next, let's see, it'll be March 21st, by 4 o'clock, all artists have to have their designs in for the murals. So going east, they will, they will pick from the historical sites and they will draw for the barrio. They will do historical sites for the barrio. Going west, they will do historical sites for the um, center city. And so they have 12, I think it's 12 or 13 sites from center city that they can pick. And then from the barrio, there are 123 and they can pick from those as well. And then I mentioned the street lighting here. Uh, we have a wellness clinic that is held monthly. It is the first Saturday of each month from 9 to 11, and we have two, two locations for that. We have the RHN Medical and Dental Group, which is at 34th and Ross. It is a free clinic, uh, and then we also have it at um, Christian Heritage Church at 900 South Nelson, just to the north of Wood Middle School. And the purpose for this clinic uh, really was that we saw people of all ages, maybe not having their own doctor, not going to the doctor, not being seen um, because they couldn't afford it, they didn't have insurance, whatever. So we've opened it up really to the city and we started, kicked it off December 1st of 2018, excuse me. So we've had four clinics and in the four clinics that we've had, there's been very little duplication. I mean, there are new people each time. Average age, I would say, is 47 years old and we've seen 161 people um, during that time, mostly adults. Wow. Uh, yeah. So um, what they get are they're, we're doing medical and dental screening, and so we have Texas Tech School pharmacy students that are doing the screenings for the medical side, and then Amarillo College Dental Hygiene Center and the Amarillo Pediatric uh, Dentistry. Uh, they are doing the, the adults. <coughs> uh, so it's really been working uh, well for us. Uh, in fact, we were able to, in February, have nine people screened for the Texas Mission of Mercy event. I don't know if you know about that. <clears throat> it's a free dental service. And they only come here about every three years, three or four years. And they, they offer these services at the Civic Center. And so I'm really excited because nine of our, fam uh, our people are getting to go to get free dental work. And it'll run from um, teeth cleaning, uh, extractions, um, root canal, there's one more, it's going to come to me, 
uh, and fillings. So of those nine people, they're going to get some of that done that day. And it's going to run on <coughs> March 29th and 30th, so it's a Friday and a Saturday from 7 a.m. to like 4 p.m. So pretty exciting. There's a Learn. No, I was just going to say, do you have a, a website to have, where you have all this, uh, uh, a link? We have our Facebook, uh, and it's the Amarillo Barrio uh, Neighborhood Plan is our Facebook. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the TMOM, the Texas Mission of Mercy, you have to go to their site to get their information on there. But, okay. but the rest of it, yes, we have on our site, what I'm telling you about it's today. It's called Texas so. of Mercy. Texas Mission of Mercy, okay. TMOM. And you'll find it, and they will run on the 29th and 30th of March. Um, so they've already pre-approved over 300 people that are going to be seen first at 7 a.m. And people get in line there like 5 a.m. in the morning. And then after they serve those 300 and something, then other people can be seen. And so um, people just wait in line until they get home for those two days. So team moms usually need a lot of volunteers for that, right? I know our They need a lot usually. of volunteers, yes. Yeah. And there, you can um, sign up online with. Um, with that program as well, because, and they will for that day because they're seeing between the two days, they will see 1,000, approximately 1,000 people. Mm -hmm. so, and and for, if you're going to ask about children, if you're thinking about that, you have to be 13 or older to be seen. So just know that. So they're telling parents who are coming, if it's for the parent, don't bring the child because it's a long day for them. So. And the volunteers, is there a minimum age? I think it's, it's I would say 18. I think it's to be 18. So moving on from that, so our next clinic is actually April the 6th, and it's at uh, RHN. And each month we have a different theme, and that'll be drug abuse for that one. And then the next one will be May 4th, and that will be all on diabetes. So we'll, we teach a class each time, someone teaches a class each time, about a 30 minute class. Um, they do it in English and Spanish. And what I'm excited about for the May 4th one is that everything is on diabetes. So they're going to do foot exams, check for retinopathy in the eyes. I mean, that's, you know, do your A1C, put your blood sugar, you know, check it for that day. And so everything's going to be about that topic. So that's coming up. Are volunteers Jerry, eager for that as well? You know, we had quite a few, Jerry, at the beginning. And then we really haven't had, uh, we've needed a, probably two or three interpreters. And that's really been it. We've, we have our, the great thing is we have our CAPREP students coming and there are five of them that come and they handle, um, they do the door prizes and the bags and they handle the snacks, they clean it up. It's really been a great uh, uh, way to just for them to earn some hours to volunteer and I always can use their help. So <laughs> your Spanish speaker, that's even better. That'd be great. So our next item here are bust up murals. So we knew that there are three uh, bus stops on 10th Avenue from Garfield to Ross, and then there are two on um, 3rd Avenue. But there are no benches, and so before we can do a mural on a bench, we have to have a bench. So that's down in the future. They're going to look at it in 2019, the city will, and decide when they can uh, install those benches, and then they've given us permission to paint them. Yes, uh, didn't Victor Leal kind of spearhead the, the the new benches. He talked to the city council here maybe a month, six weeks ago. Um, yeah. Um, Victor stopped. There was a guy laying on the grass and it was um, cold and everything. He stopped to see, you know, if he was hurt. Um, and he wasn't. He said he was just waiting for the bus, but there was no, no bench. Right. And so um, he contacted the city council and apparently had a meeting with some people within the city government to start getting some more um, benches. So that that that's in the mail. Glad to hear it. The earlier they put it up, the earlier that our students can paint them. And so what we're going to do is have our cap up students, the art students, paint it. So I'm excited about well, that. You, you might contact somebody in the city planning department and, you know, so that they wouldn't have to paint them the first time, 
the kids would. The kids could do that. Yeah. And so we're working with Chris Valverde in the planning department. And so I'll get in touch with Chris and see if what he knows about that. He hasn't said anything. So another thing we knew with the historical sites and the businesses and so on is, do people know where these are all located? And no, they don't. And so when I was in Pasco, Oklahoma, uh, in September, I went, I don't know if any of you know the Pioneer Woman, but she's on TV. And, and she's a, she's a sh I think she's a chef, but she uh, is known really throughout the world about cooking and, and pioneer cooking and that kind of thing. And so while I'm there, uh, my husband and I were there, we went to our hotel and I said, well, where is, where is the mercantile and all this stuff, you know, that we've heard, heard about on the, on her show uh, every Saturday, and they gave me this map. And you can tell it's kind of torn because I've opened it a lot. And uh, they said, well, you're right here. We were there. And here's the mercantile over here. And just use this, and it'll get you around the city. Really, the town, not the city. And so they only have 6,000 people in their community, but every weekend, on average, they have 6,000 visitors every weekend, which is pretty amazing. And while we were there on a Tuesday, uh, there was somebody there from Chicago, New Mexico, Oklahoma. I mean, I was like, a Tuesday? Of course, we came in from Texas as well, so it's an eight-hour trip. When I saw this, I thought, you know what? This would be great for the barrio. Look how colorful and pretty that is, and, mm -hmm. and there's logos on here and stuff, and there's a number by each one. And then in the back, the number corresponds to a description. It's places to eat, stay, you know, visit, whatever. And so we're going to do this. We're going to have a very similar map that will be, um, we're going to print 1,500 of them. So we are literally next week, we have our list of 160 businesses. The majority of them are in the barrio, but the rest of them are out right outside and again, supportive businesses. Uh, that we're going to put on this, we're going to ask them do they want to, for a fee, put their logo and description on um, the map, and then attached to, there's two levels, there's a $300 level, which is just your type name on it, and your, app, your address and phone number on the back. If you do the $500 level, it is um, your logo, and then in the back, it's a, you have 270 words that you can talk about your group, the, the business, etc on it and it's um, in conjunction with a scavenger hunt so people can every week and this will start june 17th through july 13th we'll finish it at the bottom of bash um, people will have a card to fill up to to take to diff 10 different locations they'll get a stamp it'll be the mpc where the body will name the planning committee and um, they will put it on there and then every Friday, by Friday, they can turn it into the Wesley Community Center to a box. Um, our board will um, pull 10 of those cards and you'll win 50, a $50 uh, Visa card. 10 people will. And that will happen for four weeks. And then the grand prize is going to be, so everybody's name goes, card and name goes into the grand prize. And it will be um, in August at the Sapu's game and it will be a suite. Uh, for that game with dinner. So it's a suite for six people with dinner and you can buy some merchandise as long as with it. So it's like a thousand dollar So we're, we're working on that fundraiser pretty quick because that fundraiser will go right here, Lighting Project. So we need to take care of that. So moving on, we uh, also realized there was a grant that uh, State Farm Insurance offered for 25, up to $25,000, and they won't, they like innovative things. And so um, I went through Michael Fox, our agent, my agent, and asked him, could I apply for it? And so our idea was to do a parklet. You may know what a parklet is? It's a movable, a parklet. It's a movable park. And so, sorry, these are blurry, but that's what a movable park looks like. So it takes about 20 people on average. And it, you can move it. You can actually, uh, the city will move it for us. Uh, we'll have it be built and designed if we get it. We should know by the end of the month or early April if we get that grant. And so what we want it for are, we have a lot of different events uh, that the Barrio does and even beyond that. And we want to be able to take it to these different sites. Uh, we've even talked to 
uh, Fiesta Foods can, the owner there, just about, you know, having it in their employee parking where people can just sit. I even brought it up to the city of Amarillo and said, you know what, until we get those benches to the bus stop, <laughs> could we have a, you know, that would be, I mean, it's covered, you know, there's yeah. covering, yeah. there's a canopy, I mean, wouldn't it be nice just to be able to sit while you're waiting on your bus yeah. for however long you do that? So, uh, we're just waiting to hear if we did get that grant. We have a neighborhood cleanup, and we'd love for you to join us. It is on April 13th, which is a Saturday. It is on our Facebook uh, site uh, page. It's from 9 to 12. We're meeting at Fiesta Foods at 10th and Arthur at 9 for a bottle of water and just a snack to have. And then we're going to go from 10th, uh, from Garfield to Ross in the alleys from 10th to 3rd Avenue and be able to clean during that time. So we're asking, you know, any age is welcome. Um, we have a student at Caprock, Daisy Rodriguez, who is uh, recruiting students to come and help us as well. So we'd love to have you on board. Um, 2020 will be, uh, our second fundraiser will be our art show. And North, if you went to the North Heights one, it was really, did you go Jesse? Yeah, right. It was really great. I just right. loved it. It was fun. So we're going to have one as well in 2020. We don't know the month yet. Um, but I do know for the one at North Heights, there were eight entries from Caprock High School art students, which was really neat. And so we want to see all of the high schools in the United States participate as well. And they want the fall of 2019 to be when we come to our So that will be coming up. Uh, Opportunity Zone, I'm not going to say much about that because we don't know much about that at this time. So it's kind of new. So once the book was done, uh, our goal is to sell 1,500. We've sold 336. Uh, it's really kind of slowed down, so thanks for giving us an opportunity to talk to you about it. In this book, uh, there's some pictures right behind you, and I'll let Lisa hold those up. This lady right here is our oldest living person in the book, I should say. And that's Mary Martinez. And Mary Martinez's family, if any of you don't know her, um, they own the Coyote Grocery Store in the Bayou. Yeah. on Arthur, and then, which is now today, if you've ever been to La Frontera, it's the same building. Oh. So yeah, delightful lady, very sweet, I really enjoyed her. Sal and Pat Martinez, uh, anybody know them? Okay, yeah. neat people. Both worked for AISD for quite a while, and then Sal went on to Region 16, but it's great to have them on board in this. And um, Tony, who's that one? Tony Renteria. <coughs> uh, Majored in social work, was you know director of the Alamo Center, which is at the Alamo Tree, and um, was just really influential. And so we were glad to have him on board as well. So there are a lot of other people that are in it. What you need to know about the barrio is it's multi generational. We ran it from uh, the oldest person was born in 1880, and the youngest was born in 1970. And so we really have that gamut of people. Um, really three things I noticed in three um, ways I could describe the barrio. It's about family, it's about culture, and it's really about hope. Because when we started doing the plan, and my husband and I were both on the planning committee, um, we could just dream whatever we wanted, and, and we're seeing that with San Jacinto. You know, they're just going to dream what do they want, and then you have to put it in writing. And as that plan, as you see, uh, there, we have 19 goals and 36 strategies, and we've accomplished three of those strategies. So we still have 33 to go. So the purpose of this uh, card, it keeps us on track of where are we, what are we working on, and that we don't get off track. Because it's easy to come to a meeting and say, hey, you know what? We need to work on those trash cans over there. And we're like, okay, well, let's look and see if it was that a priority. Right. And is that one of our goals and strategies? And is this really the committee that needs to work on that? Or is there another group that needs to be able to do that? Or um, someone may say, you know, there's a lot, our alleyways are, are dirty and we need to clean those up. Yep, you know, we know that's one of the things we said that we wanted to do. And so we really have to stay focused on this because you can get off track pretty easily. And so this helps us stay on track. I think the other thing is we have officers from, you know, I'm, president, I'm, I'm their president of the Body and Neighborhood Planning Committee. And um, we have our vice president who is uh, David Rosas, if you know David. And our secretary is Toby Feldens. 
and then our, um, his, he's our secretary historian, and then our treasurer is uh, Joanne Flores. And then we have 10 um, board members, and they just came on board with us in January. And as I was telling Jesse earlier, we found that after you work a year, uh, 13 months on the plan, our numbers really dwindled on our committee. So uh, we had officer elections in August, and still it was small. So in January, we decided to go from a 6 o'clock meeting to a noon meeting, to have so more people could come during their lunch period. And our first meeting, we had 22 people there. So I'm really pleased with that. And, and uh, this is a <coughs> hard-working committee. Everybody has a role in it, and they know it. And so when I, as I talk to people about, did you want to serve on the board, we really look at what is your strength. And so we have people, someone that loves to do Facebook, which it is not me. And so even though I'm a, I'm a, a co-administrator on it, you know, I've had to learn how to do it because I didn't even have a Facebook account, um, which you may have, but I did not. I was not going to do one. So um, I think the other thing is that this has allowed us to really look at the goals and strategies and say, what are we going to work on next? And what can we, we need quick successes, and then we need, we know there's long term. And um, Cassie at the San Jacinto, mm -hmm. um, planning kickoff meeting said, you know, this is this could be 10 years down the road that you're working on this. And we knew that going in. But this, you know, there are some planning committees that are 20, 30 years old now, uh, down in San Antonio and so on. And so we know this is long term. So thanks for the time. Um, the last thing I want to say is the books are uh, for sale. They are $25 a piece for five, four, a hundred dollars. And so you get them at 20, and so we'd we'll be glad to take your credit card or debit okay. card and bill it on your cash or check. So if you're going to write a check, it goes to Amarillo Body and Book. And uh, thanks for having me. I appreciate that. And for Lisa being here, Lisa is in the book. And so she's now famous. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, the last thing I will say is this is volume one. So I get that question, uh, comment a lot, you know, hey, you forgot a lot of people. We know that. Yeah. We know mm -hmm. that uh, we took a year to do this, and it took us several months to write it. I wrote it. Um, but what we knew was this was going to be volume one. And then down the road, years down the road, um, we moved to volume two. So we know we left people off, and we understand that. But thanks for your time. Any questions? I have a question. First, where are you going to meet the bar of the bar of the <laughs> Where are you going to make that man? You meet the police center? Or are you going to we meet at the Alamo Center at the, uh, Alamo the center. third Thursday of the month. Well, is that for your neighborhood cleanup? Oh, I'm sorry. Were you asking about the neighborhood cleanup? Yeah, the neighborhood cleanup. If you don't cleanup is going to be at Fiesta Foods oh, at Fiesta 10th and Foods. Arthur mm -hmm. in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. okay. And then our regular meeting is at Alamo Tree Center the third Thursday of the month. Mm -hmm. Is that still at six, or is that at your It's at eight. Mm -hmm. It is at noon. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? I'm glad you're moving forward and not sitting around for the government to come and do anything. You're doing it. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Right. It's great. Too. Great. It's, you know, when, when the city was working with us, they talked about, you know, y'all need to be, as a committee, be thinking about how you're going to raise this money and what you're going to mm -hmm. do with that. We cannot possibly pay for it all. And we knew that from the very first time we met. We knew that was going to happen. And so we started thinking, you know, so many fundraisers, and you could almost go weekly and somebody's doing a fundraiser. So we knew we had to come up with some. So it's important to know the commissioners, the upcoming commissioners that are coming in. See if we're going to be helping or hey, they're doing everything on the set aside town. Well, I will tell you, Commissioner Mercy McGee has been full support of And if you're coming, Mercy McGee? Yeah. Uh, yeah, full support of oh, what we're doing. Oh, she yeah. has, she does come to our meetings when she can. Um, and then uh, our city council voted this in. They, they come when they can as well. I appreciate their support because um, and we have a great planning department that we're working with so that if we have any questions, we can be in touch with them. I've been meeting with Chris Felder that, you know, about once a month and going over, okay, here's what we're working on next. But it has to happen. So good good contact there. Thank you. Thank you.
for your group. It certainly sounds fantastic. You know. There's no excuse for us not having somewhere to go to do some work. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, it sounds like we're going to have a lot of um, efforts going that way for sure. So definitely reach out to you. Um, you know, I have a saying, you know, stop telling me what you want to do and show me what you've been doing. And your group mm -hmm. certainly looks like that's yeah. what they're doing. So. Well, interestingly enough, I'm glad you said that. See the logo? Mm -hmm. That's a Caprock student design. Wow. We hired, um, oh my gosh, can't think of her name now, uh, Celeste Rodriguez to, Ramita, excuse me, to design it for us. And we paid her for it. We were one of her early customers. <laughs> and I really appreciated that because she got to experience as a student at Capra what it's like to uh, have a customer and have to meet their need because we narrowed it down to two and she combined, we wanted those combined and she did it for us and so that's pretty neat to yeah. see students get involved and, and they actually, when we were meeting at 6 p.m., they were on our committee, there were uh, three of them from the art department at Capra sure. and so um, I appreciate that they were and they continue to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, Mr. Friml and I were talking earlier about some of these neighborhoods and, you know, when you can when you can find value in yourself in doing any kind of restoration and you're diving into these things and you're putting an application to it, you start to value, you know, your surroundings and your proxy and then others start to see that and notice the change and then they start to value what you're valuing and that's just a domino effect. So. Good to see you. Really. Great job.